Jazzcast Pros. Thank you for finally somebody dressing up. For this role. <laughs> you know, you got to channel your inner superhero, yeah. you know, and it was like, wow, I'm going to a boss meeting. I have to be the most like real, raw, authentic self that I can be. So what's up, y'all? So you were in Wonder Woman. Yeah. Wonder Woman mm-hmm. first. There was like Angelina that second. meme that was going around for it was like, dress for the job you want. Mm-hmm. And they like walked in with the Wonder Woman costume on. And that's like the first thing I thought of when I saw you when I walked in. I was like, she's dressing for the job she wants. Yeah. I know. I think we have to go shopping. It's Especially since it's Halloween time, I think it's a, probably a good opportunity for us to get some costumes. Right. Maybe we just do this. Just I now. think we should all have the, the Wonder Woman yeah, tiara. Queen. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Hey, ladies. Do you own your own business or are you considering starting your own? Are you craving connection and are ready to feel seen? It's time to get real about what it takes to make it as a woman business owner. My name is Kelly Bush. And I'm Kelly Metris. And we're the hosts of Getting Real with Bossy, the podcast that unites and educates women business owners through real, raw, and honest conversations. Today, we're interviewing Angelina Hilton Mm -hmm. from Pop Rock and Variant Adventures. And I think she's a good example of just doing it when it feels right and going with your gut. So yeah, I'm excited to interview her today. Me too. Hey, y'all. I'm Erica Sorbello, and I'm the owner as well as the stylist at Gallery Salon, located at 4 Elton Street in the neighborhood of the Arts in Rochester, New York. We specialize in everything from lived-in hair color to vivid creations, haircuts, wedding hair and makeup, structured manicures, gel extensions, and the best nail art in the city. We work closely with Rochester artists and makers to carry an array of handmade goodies for you to shop from. Gallery Salon is proud to offer gender-neutral pricing, and we are a certified LBGTQ plus safe zone. Our space and staff are welcoming and down to earth. We know you'll be comfortable to come as you are and celebrate your individuality at Gallery Salon. You can find us at galleryhair.com and Facebook or Instagram. Give us a call at 585-271-8340. Or better yet, swing by and meet us and see what we're about. Gallery Salon, located at 4 Elton Street in the neighborhood of the Arts in Rochester, New York. We are live. Welcome back to another episode of Getting Real with Bossy. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. How, How are you? I'm <laughs> good. Guess what? What? I'm not tired today. <gasps> I know. I think it's the first time I feel like I'm not. I would say make it a t-shirt, but then we wouldn't be able to wear it every day. That's true. But I am feeling, I don't know. I'm feeling great today. I had therapy this morning. Ooh. That always helps. <laughs> I got a good night's sleep. Work's going well. I love the fall. I hear it might snow soon. So all of those things make me very happy. Are you kidding me? I love it. No. I can't wait. I'm the, I love being in upstate New York. I don't even know if that's what we're called, Western New York, wherever it is that we live. Or Finger Lakes. Um, I love where we live, A, because there's no giant bugs, mm-hmm. and B, there's no hurricanes. Um, but my favorite seasons are the two weeks that we get of spring and the two weeks we get of fall. Yeah. So you're like, oh, the weather's perfect. And then it gets really, really hot. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, the weather's perfect. And then it snows. Yep. So my favorite are those four weeks of the entire year. <laughs> and the rest of the year, I'm either trying to cool down or trying to warm up. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. So, I can't yeah. wait. I cry when I, f- the first snowfall. Are you? St- <laughs> I do. It brings me such joy. I love you so much. <laughs> Like so much. <laughs> like I'll have to pull over. And the first day that all of the Christmas music comes on, Sirius Radio. I, Ooh, I turn it off. Oh, it's like my fourth favorite day of the year. You're not allowed to listen to Christmas music until after Thanksgiving. I don't know if you remember at my wedding, I had Christmas music <laughs> playing in August. Oh my gosh. You are too much. Yeah. I love it. No, no, you just made me anxious. I was like, like Christmas? Christmas. No, it's Christmas. Really lovely and warm. And it's <gasps> not so even wonderful. the weather. It's just how much I have to do for Christmas, right? I know. Well, it's because you have 19 children. Well, and we just and keep a huge family opening businesses. Yeah. So. All right. That. Oh, yeah. I'm opening a business next week. Stop. Tell yeah. me more. The day we get back from the retreat, uh, we're opening our taqueria in Greece. It's a quick service Selena's model. Um, we probably won't institute the delivery services for like a week just yeah. to get the hang of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we decided that there's never going to be a right time. So we just set a date. I think that's a wonderful thing we should talk about more because there really is never a right time to Mm -hmm. open, to change, to pivot. That's how I said it in a funny voice. There's just (laughs) never that right time. And I think so many people that want to grow grow, grow and shift. Yeah. The shift grow, the grow shift. Yeah. 
um, so many people have great ideas for businesses and they just wait until everything is in place. And Today, we're interviewing Angelina Hilton mm -hmm. from Pop Rock and Variant Adventures. And I think she's a good example of just doing it when it feels right yep. and going with your gut. So yeah, I'm yeah. excited to interview her today. Me too. Oh, Hello. Hey, how you doing? It's good to be here. Yay. Hi. <laughs> so we are here with Wonder Woman. Also it's a known pretty as. big get. I know. It's incredible. <laughs> We're so fortunate. We'll take pictures and share them. All the pictures. All right. So we are here with Angelina Hilton. Who are you? What do you do? What do you own? That's a heavy loaded question. <laughs> when it comes time to talking about yourself, it's a little, it gets, you know, if you're not used to doing it, it can be a little uncomfortable. I work a lot behind the scenes, but Pop Rock, Very Adventures, God, Grit and Grace, and everything else you've got mm -hmm. your hands in. My name is Angelina Marie Hilton. I am a wife, a mom, a woman in recovery. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. And I also have a few businesses located in downtown Rochester. A couple of them you might know, Pop Rock, uh, which is a pop culture cafe located in Parcel 5. And we also have Variant Ventures, which is a mission-driven marketing company helping startups. And you say we, is that you and your husband? My husband and I, yes, we are partners. And when it comes into our business, it's my the visionary and the integrator. You know, he has a lot of the, he has a hundred different ideas. And then I help to navigate those ideas. And we pick stuff that is, that we feel guided to work on. And then we, I help bring it to life. I love that. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a very similar mm -hmm. Me too. partnership where... One of us has to be like, either this can or can't work. Or like, mm -hmm. how is this going to work? One of us has to be like the idea person. And the other person's like, okay, well, what does that look like? Right. Mm -hmm. How do we make this work? Is this legal? Yeah. Is this legal? <laughs> yeah. You know, there's definitely Can we make really it legal? Big yeah. Big yeah. Exactly. We do. And for sure, you know, he, uh, people that might be familiar seeing my husband's face, Jason Hilton, he uh, used to be the face of our company. And that was a lot due to the fact, you know, I introduced myself as a wife and a mom first, because that has been my primary role for, you know, the last eight years. But now both children, I have an eight-year-old son, Elijah Hilton, and a uh, little four-year-old Ezra Grace, the face that runs the place. You know, they're <laughs> both in school now full-time, and that has really blessed me with the opportunity to be okay, who is this woman now? You know, who, mm -hmm. you know, she has been behind the scenes. Um, you know, did, where, who, who is she? What does she stand for? What does she look like? What has she learned? What does she bring to the table? You know, being able to sit here today has taken a, a long time and a lot of work. You know, so I really appreciate y'all inviting me to have a seat at your table today. I think it says something that this is the outfit you chose mm -hmm. for all that work to, to come out the other side in full Wonder Woman. Thank you very much. I don't know that I'll ever see you differently. I love it. Well, here we go, mm -hmm. y'all. I know, think the I first think time that. I ever met you was like at some kind of function and you had this on and I was like, that's the most amazing costume. But I didn't like know who you were or like what you guys did. We, we were just like at a function, maybe at like Straw Museum or something when they used to have like the superhero days. So we had Super City Rochester where we, again, my husband and I and, and a group of just incredible folks within our community we turned the what people would conceive as a, as a regular Comic Con into like an unventional Comic Con, where we turned the city of Rochester into a super city, a multi venue, uh, multi functional, and indoor outdoor uh, Comic Con, and it was a, it was a lot of fun. And I remember we were at we were at the Strong to do some promotion, and yes, the, the, I had just purchased this. <laughs> So my husband and I have been together for 14 years, and this is just a couple years ago. And he's the he's the pop culture king and the Comic Con king. And I'm like, I will never be caught wearing anything. <laughs> but he was like, you have to. This is the role. Like when we're, if you're gonna go out there, and I was like, if I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna go big. I'm gonna be the person that I want to channel and get out there because if I'm gonna represent, then I gotta. I again. 
who am I? And so during that time, it was Super City and I got a Selena's t-shirt. <laughs> but that's not where our story started <laughs> with Selena's. I actually, way back when in 2008, I used to work for the Democrat and Chronicle and was in the Insider Magazine. And I was in charge of all of the advertising <laughs> on the <laughs> east mm-hmm. side of the river. And that included all restaurants, bars, nightclubs, festivals, anything that fell under hospitality. I got to party and, and have fun with. And Selena's was was a client. And yeah. that was when your husband, I think, was like general manager at the yeah. time. Yep. And that's when I first was introduced mm-hmm. to the Marshall Street yeah. Bar and Grill. So we're going back, you know, at least a decade right now. Mm-hmm. And it's very interesting how things come full circle, you know, and, and being at where these were the grounds that I used to go, Parkside Diner, which is right behind <laughs> us. I would meet him, Jim Papa's, every week on like Monday mornings to get the ad is the ads in to be ran for for a weekend magazine that would come out on Thursdays. And it was, and here we are, you know, have, I have a restaurant now. I'm not just selling and doing marketing for restaurants. I have one. I, we have the, the knowledge of being on both sides of the counter, which is fantastic. We're still learning. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to be surrounded by people that can teach us. You know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Mm -hmm. And I feel like right now I am so privileged to be among these two women here that are just so instrumental in propelling women forward and allowing them to grow in their gifts. You made me cry. I'm not the crier. I know. Here we go. So, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, <laughs> all right. So before let's Kelly start. starts crying, okay. let's focus. I'm not the crier. <laughs> no. Uh, before we start or go any further, let's start with your first business. Was that your first business, Pop Rock? No. Oh, okay. No. I've always, I've been a self-starter for a long time. I think, I think before I graduated college, I filed my first DBA. Uh, AM advertising, and I focused on freelancing for people, again, startups, um, other people in college who wanted to start their own businesses. I'd design logos. I'd help get plans together. Um, So this self-starter, it is a mindset. You know, when we talk about business ownership, you know, I, I have taken ownership of every position I've ever held, whether that was, you know, busing tables in my first job when I was 14 years old to running the cash register at Target at 16 and then going to college and owning that because that was I wanted to earn the best grade that I could, learn what I could, mm-hmm. experience what I could, get involved in everything that I could. And then I I wanted to do things my way. You know, when we talk about bossy, which I love. I used to be called bossy Mm -hmm. when I was little. Mm -hmm. And now people just call me boss, Mm -hmm. which, you know, I've, I feel like I, yeah, I've earned that. I've earned that title. I've earned to wear, I've earned this crown that I put out that is on my head right now. And it comes with having this intrinsic desire to learn, to grow. And then when you've, when you've been poured into so much, having your cup full enough to start pouring out into others. Mm. And so I felt like I was ready for that in college. And that's how I met my husband. I mean, I didn't really meet him that way. We started out having more of a, I mean, it's, we've always had this very interesting relationship. He would say, oh, I think that you're in love with my mind. And yeah, I mean, I really, I, I love the way that you think and I want to bring your ideas to life. Um, but he had brought me into his company at the time to help him with his website design and logo redesign and those types of things. And then he captured my heart through his love and passion of food and mm-hmm. cooking for others. And so this partnership of serving our community through food and serving them with, you know, this, this joy and this passion really stems from what really brought him and I together in the first place. And that's where Pop Rock came from? Yeah, well, it, Pop Rock, when you, I walked into his house on our first date and it was just surrounded by uh, comics, collectibles, toys, art. He was, our first date was him cooking me chicken artichoke French and there was there was Motown remix in the background and then Nintendo Wii was on. So we had video games, you get pop culture, <laughs> you've got great music, you've got incredible food, you know, and he introduces to me a different world through food. And that also was really transformative in how I was able to operate within the city, working with the different restaurants and having that 
uh, that desire to know more and travel around the world and learn different cultures through food and what that does by breaking boundaries, by breaking bread. Um, so that, yes, in the very, very beginning, he had shared with me, someday I want to have a restaurant. And over the years, you know, we'd look around going up and down East Avenue, you know, having ideas about food trucks or this and that, um, while always being in the service of others, working within the restaurant industry. You know, I was bartending out at the filling station out in Webster while he was working at, it's by the uh, yeah. e Eagle Vale, the mm -hmm. nice, there was like, and it turned into a really nice one. He managed that for a while, you know, and uh, this wanting to to put this stuff into action and then having this opportunity, we got to do it in uh, 2018. And so Pop Rock was birthed in 2017. So fun. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. When it first opened, we were all just like, what? Yeah, we had a couple meetings there. Oh, we yeah. We had the Restaurant Association, too. It was so different. Mm -hmm. It is so different. And you guys have my outsider view from where you guys started to where you guys are now. And then hearing all of these stories that you've told so far, it all makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys seem to have navigated, okay, we want to open this place, but now that it's open, we want to make sure that we're still using our core values. And we talk about that a lot of how hard it is sometimes when it comes to the bottom line to keep those core values in place and the stresses of owning a business and like keeping that in the forefront is a full-time job. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a whole yep. nother level of business ownership that not everyone puts at the forefront, but when it is important to you, it's really difficult sometimes. So you guys closed your doors during COVID. Temporarily, yes. Um, and is that when you started Varied Adventures? Because that's when I found yeah, out. Yeah, that's it. when it, it was like, okay, how are we gonna turn how are we gonna turn this very difficult, challenging time into a way that we can share a share the story in a way that helps to inspire others. And so it was it started out as our storytelling platform variant adventures. And now it's turned into this, okay, this is the platform in which I believed I was told I was going to make five years before this. And we talk about core values. And it was at that time, five years before that, when I first learned about what core values were. And at that time, I was, I was challenged to write, what does your life look like five years from now? And this is in 2016. So we're, you know, we're coming into 2021 and, um, or 2020 and 2021. And, it looked like, okay, I will have two kids. We will be traveling around the world. We'll have a platform that's sharing what we're doing with our lives and what the impact that we're making. And it will be used to raise funds in order for us to be able to go out into the world, into those hard to reach places because we have been equipped to do such a thing. You know, we, and then they, they introduced core values by, um, it was in this corporate environment. So they were really trying to, reorganize the culture and make it more of a, instead of a top down culture, more of a bottom up where everybody had this autonomy. And that gave me the ability to be like, okay, I can create my own position. They gave me that space to do that. So again, this business, this ownership, and then my husband asked me to come and work with him. And so that's where I started working as a marketing director for Hilton advisory, which was a investor marketing firm. And that's when we also founded Pop Rock in 2017 as a pop-up comic and collectible shop at the toys and the village, you know, the village yeah. gate and those types of things. And we had an office. In that office, we had everything all displayed, and they were he was going out getting monster energy drinks, and people are coming in and out, and we were in this position, okay, we might we would what are we gonna do with it? And that's when we started looking around for this space for 2018. The Union Tavern is a beautifully restored building with a rich history and views of Lake Ontario. Featuring New England favorites and hearty comfort food, everyone will have a favorite dish. From large groups to intimate dinners, there's plenty of space to celebrate special occasions. Come visit us at 4565 Culver Road, right across from the Jackrabbit. Live it, love it, lime it with Selena's Mexican restaurant located in the Village Gate. Open Tuesday through Sunday for lunch and dinner. Dine on delicious homemade recipes while catching up with your favorite staff. There is a happy hour every day at the bar. 
And don't forget that kids eat free on Wednesdays with the purchase of an adult meal. And remember, you can't make everyone happy. You are not a taco. And then we, well, I don't want to go into all of that. We aligned ourselves with some challenging people that didn't share in our values um, of fun, creativity, community, and safety. And so standing for those values and making sure that, you know, everything that we've invested thus far stays protected and that what the community has invested so far stays protected. What do we do? And so we went through some difficult times separating. And then you had, you, we had a uh, direct competitor move in across the street which was also challenging and and they came under attack. And so sticking up for the core values, again, of fun, community, creativity, and safety, how are we going to set an example? And so my husband and I took a stand publicly with them to share that we weren't going to tolerate that kind of behavior. And that also folks didn't like some of that. And so that also caused a division. Um, and then I came into a leadership role in the beginning of 2020, and that's when I learned, okay, we need to put in what's called traction, and that is making sure that everybody has a specific role, that all of their roles are um, clearly identified, um, that everybody has accountability, and so that's when we started to grow our team and bring in employees. And that was like, wow. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not just Mm -hmm. working for, we're not just working for ourselves anymore. Like now we have this huge level of responsibility Mm -hmm. for employees and that we grew really fast and things were like, things started moving really quickly. Again, this traction, this entrepreneur operating system of having traction. And I can go through all of that because that's really what's helping me and my variant ventures and helping other folks is understanding, you know, what your mission is, what your values are, what your 10 year picture is and what your three year plan is. And then what the year, what the year is going to look like and breaking that down into quarterly goals mm-hmm. and making sure your accountability chart is filled with the right people in the right seats and then using that to propel you forward. And that's been really transformative for our businesses and also for those that we've been working with. So you're still doing Variant Adventures, only now you're not traveling. Right. It's more the Variant Adventures. It has grown more to just be the storytelling platform in the different areas of our lives. So we have business, we have faith, we have culture, we have service. You know, when we look at our life and we're, we're layered in all these different things, you know, what is it that we're learning with folks and using it to tell stories and what we're learning um, in order to share with it and build relationships with others. And so that's more of it's I call it more of a lifestyle blog. It's okay. not the primary focus in which I'm I'm doing anymore. I also have a blog called thisismom.com. Oh, I didn't know so that. So that it brings in stories for motherhood and matriarchs and my intention with that is to build that into a tangible product um, of stories from women and strong uh, uh, influential women in our lives and the stories that they have to share. So there's, it's a lot, a lot of different stuff going on. Over. Yeah, it is a lot. And now you're in parcel five, mm-hmm. which knowing what you do now with your business, I don't know that you would have been even able to achieve that in your previous location. So I feel like this is for all that you went through, which is horrible. I feel like it got you to a place where you guys can really do what it is you set out to do with your business. You know, I, I think when we talk about mission, And so we, my husband and I put God at the top of our business. We say he's the owner, he's in charge. My husband and I wake up before the kids every morning and it's taken a real long time to get to that point. And we open our day up in different devotions. One of them is, is an opportunity for our own personal relationships with God. Then there's one for our relationship in our marriage. And then there's one for relationship in our recovery. And we ask for the guidance and the direction, like, what is it that we're supposed to do today? You know, how can we pour out into others? And, you know, and he, when we feel that he is speaking to us and we surrender to the things that he's saying, I feel that that has really transformed the way that we have lived our lives, and especially in the last year. And by being intentional, putting out into the universe, you know, I, I do believe that you can manifest things by doing that. 
for us, it's our relationship with God, but for others, it might look a little bit different, but putting it out there and then asking, okay, what is it like surrendering to the process? What is it that you want me to do? When you hear that little voice that says, you know, say something to that person, you know, say hello or smile or, you know, give away your services for free, you know, and then let me, give me the space to multiply. And when we do that, it's just, it's really been incredible. And that's what a lot of this book is about God, grit and grace. It has been that process of not believing, not accepting Jesus and going into that, that being the first 28 years of my life and then being baptized and then going through the whole process of being born again. What does that look like? What is God's voice versus my own voice versus the enemy's? You know, what happens when I go this way and I fall on my face or, you know, my, my brother dies or my relationship with my husband is going to, is going to end in divorce or my business is going to die or, you know, all of these things. And then how do, how do you surrender and be able to move forward with it? And so this has been that, that whole process. So you're pointing to something that people can't see that we haven't (laughs) talked about yet. So I wish I had a, where's our YouTube channel? You brought a book. God, Grit and Grace, written by Angelina Marie Hilton. Mm-hmm. So you wrote a book in the middle of all this? In 2021. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just, you're, you're a doer. This is amazing. I'm just, this is my first time seeing yeah, it. Yeah, Kelly didn't get, I got to see it before. Um, I was late coming in today, so I didn't get to look at this yet. This is amazing. Uh, when are you looking to publish this? So right now I am in the process of getting things like the bio and public appearances and pre-orders in at the moment. And in December, it's going into an editor's hand. If you open that up, it's that's the promo copy. It's a rough draft. It's it's as edited as I could get it to. And now it needs to go to professional and then it drops in 2023. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine with everything you just said, mm-hmm. having the time to write all these words. So <laughs> that, well, we so talk that about comes... it all the time. Like we got to write a book. We got to write. We got to do these things. So uh, let me tell you about happen. Ebony Nicole Smith. <laughs> she is an author and a publishing engineer, and she had this thing called the Bold Writers Challenge in 2021, where she challenged us to write a book within 31 days. And there was time that was set aside every single day. And at that time, it was during July of 2021. I had one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening every day for 31 days to get the book written. And so we would check in, we'd open with prayer, we'd get into a lesson if need be, because you know that it does you can't just get in and just start writing. Like there's a whole process <laughs> to getting what's an outline and what is a memoir and how do you tell your story and then what goes into an introduction. And so she helped to navigate that whole process. And so I was able to complete my first draft in 24 days. I documented the whole thing. Go, I have it on my Variant Adventures YouTube. The links are a little private because I was like, mm, maybe I'll make a, maybe I'll make a documentary out of this. Mm-hmm. So they have, there have to be specially requested if you want to see them. But I'm starting <laughs> to drop them now because now I've also recorded the process. I'm in that same process again. Currently, almost through with it. The next, the Bold Riders Challenge Part Two for me, and I took my first draft that I had handwritten edits in and have edited it and then put it up into designed my covers. I have two covers here trying to figure out which one I wanted. Um, and then They're both I gorgeous. put the promo copy together and now I have this and she's taking it off in my hands in December and and we're going to be having it hopefully in stores. I mean, we have a bookstore. We have a, the, where the Pop Rock is still, right. we still offer comic books and graphic novels and all that good stuff. So maybe we'll be the first distribution center. How does that feel? Like when you got to the last page and you were like, I'm done. How did that feel? It was hard. You know, doing something like this, it, it, there were days when we would come in and we would either be really happy and joyful or there were times when it was like bawling our eyes out because you have to, it's a process, you know, and you're bearing your heart and soul into a memoir, you know, having to relive some things that maybe hadn't been addressed before, you know, recovery. I told, I should have, I'm a woman in recovery. I just got my six year coin last Ooh. week. Um, and put a giant applause. Thank you. Right? 
Okay, thank you. And the recovery is like hurts, habits, and hangups. And if you're not equipped with the tools to be able to go back to some of those traumatic times to be able to get you through it, if you if you if you're not equipped, it could it it can be exhausting. You know, so it was really awesome to have an accountability partner. And that's really what she brings to the table is like not just this wealth of knowledge on how to get this done, but she holds you accountable too. And this is the product of it. And it's really beautiful. It really is good. If you go to my Facebook or my Instagram, you can see the moment in which she got to hold the book for the first time and the huge binder in which it started by putting all the pages together and then bringing it down into a story and then putting it into an actual book format is, it's a process. It was a process and it's progress. And I'm so excited because it allows me to go out and, and I feel like I have a purpose. Um, well, I think you had a purpose before this. Yeah. Yeah. But well, we got to share, share, yes. sharing our stories. And it's, it's not one thing because we are just such multifaceted people and we wear a bunch of different hats. Mm-hmm. And I think what makes us really beautiful is it gives us tools and different seasons and different areas of our lives to relate to different people and meet people where they're at. Uh, and I think that that's really important. I think more people need to do that. I think that social media has kind of killed that. Not that we were ever super great at it at understanding where people are at, but now that there's this like false narrative Mm -hmm. of people's lives, like people expect something else out of others that's not there or assume things from others before they actually know what's going on. Right. Because that's what they see on their phones, you know, instead of just being like, this is where you are and this is where I am and they're not the same place and that's okay. Right. Right. You know, and let's, let's learn about each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to understand to empathize. Greetings, everyone. My name is Ra. Yes, I am the host of Father Torch. I would like to take this time to invite you in my discussions on very, very important topics of being a black and brown father in today's society. Being a parent, the other parent, we face trials and tribulations too. We have worries, we have feelings. Here at Father Torch, we promote the advocacy of being the dad you wish you had. Join me at fathertorch.com. So where is Pop Rock today? So Pop Rock today is down around the corner from our previous location off East Avenue. We are located at 45 Euclid Street, right in Parcel 5, right in the heart of downtown what an amazing, you know, we open up our doors and it's like, you can, I feel like we can just breathe. Mm -hmm. We're breathing life that we're getting, we're getting breathed into. And it's like, we get to pour out. You know, I I say that we used to be on a major artery into the city and now we're right in the heart, which really gives us an opportunity and a responsibility to, you know, serve our community in a way that's different than, than what's been done before. You know, what a blessing this is to be, to have this opportunity to do this. And so we have a lot of different things going on with Pop Rock. You know, we do a free lunch Friday on the last Friday of the month. Um, free that's, lunch Friday. And that's been going on since April. We So tell me about yeah, Free Lunch Friday. We partner with a guest chef. We partner with local organizations that help to donate food. And the commissary donates their space for us to um, introduce these folks. And we all work together to create this amazing meal. And from noon to one on the fourth Friday, we serve the community lunch for free. And it's the challenge is, is that the chef gets the ingredients one week ahead of time. So they get to try to figure out what they're going to make with it. Uh, and oh, then, so they just have whatever's done. Mm-hmm, like, this is the one mm-hmm, we got. You yep. have to make something. That's kind of fun, though. It's and the cha- chef. Yes. Yeah, like... It's, it's a challenge. And that stems from when we were in a, a dark season of our lives where we were, you know, we had a really big need. We were serving out of the Father's Heart Ministry, and that's a mobile food truck. And they go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday into the community around the city serving hot meals, free groceries, um, clothes, and a word. And so they poured into us and helped us out. And when we were able to start serving full time again, 
we said that we wanted to make sure that we were serving our community in a way that was different. We wanted to give back. We wanted, and we'd wanted to do it in a way that again, broke down these barriers, broke down these boundaries. Like we wanted Jerry that's sleeping on the bench to be able to enjoy the exact same meal right next to Jerry, the CEO in in the penthouse Mm -hmm. um, at the same table, the same meal, the same kind of dignified, the same exceptional, delicious freaking meal. Like these are so good. And there's like this different, level of gratitude. You know, there's the day-to-day grind when you you have sales goals to make and, you know, how are you going to, if you have to come in and, and you have to trim a little bit here and there, you know, for your finances, but then when your community can come around and you can be able to serve, really serve from the heart and not have to worry about, you know, where your food's going to come from or how much it's going to cost. Like it's so fulfilling. And, I believe that it it is helping our community in so many different ways. Like if you don't have to worry about where your meal is going to come from as a person who is in need or has to find food for their family, you know, then you can use that time to be able to focus on other things. And there are so many people that have that need that we just aren't really aware of. You know, we talk about what we hide behind on social media, but nobody would know that, you know, while we're out serving and feeding communities, we're barely able to even feed ourselves, you know, and that's the reality. And so, you know, when we surrender to what we, you know, what we feel God is saying to us, it just really has, has been able to pour in so we can pour back out. You pour out a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. You're pouring out into the community. You're pouring out in your relationship. You're pouring out to meet God. You're pouring out to make your financial goals and keep the restaurant and businesses open because, hey, you got to pay bills. You're mm-hmm. pouring and you have a family to your children and the business that is having a household, whether you have kids or not, right? Like mm-hmm. you still have to get everything done. Um, do you ever find that you need help pouring in? All the time. I started therapy over a year ago. Praise God for therapy and mm-hmm. celebrate recovery, you know, being in recovery, being having accountability partners and sponsors and um, being surrounded. I, I prayed. I remember when you first started coming into Pop Rock, I remember sitting down and then you invited me to something I forgot. And I was like, I need a mentor. I need a woman, a strong woman who can teach me the ropes on how to run a fucking rest. How to, oh, you can swear. You're okay. <laughs> how, to, how, to, <laughs> how to run a restaurant here because I've worked in them and I've done all this other stuff, but now we've got, we've got people. We have, a di- again, it's a different level of responsibility mm-hmm. and it's a different, it's a different shift. And I prayed, you know, I reached out to organizations like SCORE, you know, I'm also looking for someone who is a, uh, you know, a minority, a woman minority to help me as an indigenous woman to navigate what that's also like and what's available. And, um, but that doesn't really exist. And so I have been blessed by being surrounded by incredibly strong women and women business owners, women entrepreneurs that in different areas of my life that have truly helped me to navigate this season from having panic attacks before leaving the house Mm. to being able to sit here at the table with you today. Because I'll tell you what, when you had your anniversary party, I was supposed to be there, but I couldn't even make it out my front door. Mm. I was ready to go. I was dressed. I was ready and I was excited. And I had just gotten through taking off my mask and from what, you know, with how difficult that was to get through that to, to being here now. And I have to give people a shout outs for that. Ruby Rodriguez from Moxie Image Consulting in Pato and Wino. She really helped me to peel away the different layers of, you know, you you have your mask on on your social media and you're mm-hmm. not posting and you want to have less than 50 people that you're connected to, to being able to be the most authentic woman that God has called you to be and having that confidence to step out into the world as your most authentic self. And that took a whole year. So I had her by my side coaching me, Ebony Nicole Smith here with God, Great and Grace, you know, helping me to peel back and start talking to the little Angelina um, and what really was holding her back from having this relationship and being the woman that God has called her to be. And we're still working together now. You know, my mom, she's been an incredible support and just an influence in just watching her just 
be so selfless in pouring into her family and putting her family as a priority, making sure that, you know, we're all taken care of so that we can, again, go out and meet other people where they're at. So you have a lot of people that are helping pour in. (sighs) Yes. How do you pour into your own cup? Self-care. Yeah. Everybody's looks different, right? Like mine, sometimes I just lay on my living room floor. (laughs) And then my kids will walk in the house and be like, what are you doing? They're like, oh, mom's just laying on the floor. Don't talk to her. I make sure to make my doctor appointments. Mm. I make sure to go to therapy. Mm-hmm. That's important. I just did, I just completed a grief group, which was three months every week, starting off the Monday, getting into all of the hard stuff that you know you just push down, push down. And then before that was anxiety for three months. Before that was cognitive behavioral therapy. So it's been a process and I just, that's really, and I like to get my nails done. That helps me to feel powerful. I talk with my hands a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's making sure that I um, go every six weeks is really important to me. I used to get before COVID, I would get pedicures on the regular and I didn't really care what my toes looked Mm -hmm. like, but no one really talked to me for an hour and I got to sit in a massage chair. There are times where I would go into work and I would go down to the basement where my office was and then scoot out the back door and go get a pedicure while they thought that I was at work. Yeah, and it was that. my time just to myself. And I felt like I was screwing it to the, yeah, the man, which was me, which was you. Yeah. But it just was a nice moment for myself. But <laughs> It's so good too to have your feet taken care of. We mm-hmm. are on our feet putting in our steps, putting in the miles in we, if we, we've got to take care of our feet. We're wearing, we might, we're wearing different hats and we're wearing different shoes mm. and, you know, grounding too is super important being barefoot and being out there. <laughs> and so I've, I had the name princess Blackfoot for a long time. And then my <laughs> daughter was born. So I, I now I'm queen Blackfoot, but I need to make sure that I go and get those feet cleaned. And <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing better mm. than just being my, my favorite week every year is we go to the mountains and it's the only time my feet get tan mm-hmm. because, and I always forget to sunscreen because it's not hot, mm-hmm. but we're just outside and we're, I just, I don't wear shoes for like the whole week. And like, I have to remember to put shoes on to like go into the stores, but we're just barefoot for like a whole week. Cause I don't have to do anything else. And right. it's just my favorite week. And we're just barefoot. And there's just nothing mm-hmm. like it. Just not caring. Mm-hmm. I would imagine another way you give back to yourself is doing the great work you do at Pop Rock and creating events. And I think that you have one coming up very soon. Yes. Thank you. Can you tell us more about that? So it's an incredible time to be Indigenous. Uh, We just celebrated Indigenous People's Day in Monroe County, and it was not a shared day. It was its own day, which went into legislation earlier this year. And it's, it's a really big milestone. Um, and I'm also involved in, in that effort and what that might look like moving forward for our community and our classrooms. And so when it, it comes to what the future of Rochester looks like, you know, we are all working towards a better community where we feel heard, where we feel seen, um, And being an Indigenous woman, trying to find somebody else to be able to look up to for that, I haven't been able to find it. So I feel there is this responsibility to take a step into that light. And so with that responsibility for Native American Heritage Day, which is in November, uh, that is the day after Thanksgiving, that is the fourth Friday of the month, which also it happens to be our free lunch Friday and chef challenge. And so we are looking for an indigenous chef to come in to help us to be able to create bridges by introducing our community and those around us um, through, through food and introduce them to the culture through serving authentic native cuisine. And then the next day is small business Saturday, you know, the shop local shop small, um, with it being a retail day, I want to bring in Native American creatives, I'm calling us Native creatives. So this is the Native Made Market. And okay. so on Saturday, the 26th, November 26th, we will have the Native Made Market where we have several vendors who have already signed up to come in from different areas of the state 
to share what it is that they are creating. Because again, they are very small businesses, they're Native American businesses. Um, so they get to share with the community on this day and help to bridge the gap by um, introducing the city of Rochester and the residents and the students and the and the commercial folks that are all around us in that area to the culture um, in a impactful and meaningful way. We're also bringing in folks to help um, to do some performances and some singing and dancing and storytelling. Other folks in the community who are actively participating in the change to provide education and awareness. Um, so it really is going to be an opportunity for Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities to come together and break bread over a very sensitive time. And so offering a time of healing and forgiveness and compassion um, while also supporting, you know, the people that where this land that we are on um, belongs to. Mm. So that's on Small Business Saturday. November 26th. And yes. what's the time frame? From 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And that's right at Pop, Pop Rock. Rock. Yes. How can the community get involved other than obviously attending and spreading and sharing the word, which I'm sure will be on your social media and all that? Yes. So on poprochester.com under events, there is an event page where there is going to be some more updates. And then we do have a native made Facebook page where you can uh, keep following along. But what I need now from our community are some sponsorships. You know, I do have folks who want to come in and participate, but they have to commute over three hours. Mm -hmm. And when we're asking folks to do that, to participate, you know, we need to compensate for the time. And it's not that it's you know, it's, I need some help. So I need some funding, uh, financial contributions. Um, I need a PA system. I would, uh, I can probably help with that. <laughs> that would be great yeah. if you would love to be an in-kind yeah. sponsor to do that. Um, giant speaker. It's, yeah. We got a lot of so that. that takes care of that, y'all. <laughs> there it goes. Mm-hmm. You ask, you receive. Mm-hmm. Food, you know, I want to make sure that we feed our vendors, our volunteers, our participants. I am looking for some volunteers. Security would be great. You know, this is, this is a, again, a sensitive time. Um, there could potentially be a lot of people or there could be not. But my hope is that people will be able to smell the culture, be able to hear it. And, you know, in their, in their high towers and they can see it and, you know, they can feel it with the music and that it really just, again, it, it becomes this intimate experience, this seed that gets planted for what could potentially come next year. And my hope for that now with everything that's going on is that, you know, we, we do have a Native American festival or we, we, you know, we bring folks downtown and have a powwow, like a legit, a legit celebration, but that's, that's the big, that's the bigger picture this year. We just want to plant the seed. Mm-hmm. I love it. And I feel so heavy in my heart that you started this entire portion of the conversation by saying that you had to be the person that you were looking for. Mm-hmm. It reminded me, Lizzo just made a quote about that. And they were like, what would you tell little Lizzo? And she was like, well, I'd tell her that if you want to see yourself on stage, you have to go be that person. Right, exactly. And I get so heavy. Like it's 2022. An indigenous woman should be able to find mentors, people to help her that have similar experiences. And that's just so heavy. It's been a, it's, it's been tough. Yeah. That, that is a heavy conversation because I have reached out and have introduced and have shared that story, but it's, 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 There's just these barriers to entry, whether it's, you know, finances and you having to pay $1,200 in order upfront, not even on credit in order to get the skills needed to be able to come out onto the stage, to be able to present yourself and, you know, speak and articulate the message in a way that it has grace and is impactful and is tactful. You know, it's, it's very difficult, you know, asking somebody for a mentor and do you have any indigenous and they say, we have Hispanic and African American. We'd love to have more African American. And it's like, but I just said I need right. this, right. you know, and trying to be like, okay, there's this. And and I am, I'm I'm Italian American and Native American. And I do look more white than I do indigenous or more Hispanic than I do indigenous. 
Um, and that is, it's not my fault. And that is why this fight is so important to be able to come up because when it, if my son is not considered indigenous, but I am, and we have this opportunity in this day and age to change that in order to save our humanity. When we talk about extinction, it's for real. Mm-hmm. So, and this is the time that we're in. And so I, I think that there's this, uh, there's this real opportunity to celebrate the culture, all of the amazing uh, progress that we have made in, in just this very short amount of time. Um, and there's this opportunity to, again, build bridges and educate in a way that, that is with grace and tact. And I think that opening up our doors at our spot, uh, especially it's more of a non-invasive. It's, I love that we have museums. I love that we have cultural centers. Those are excellent. Uh, but what's the challenge is trying to get folks who might not have the money, the transportation, or the age, or is age appropriate to be able to go into these places to learn. So if we can, again, open our doors to the community and invite folks in to have a seat at our table in a way in which we are breaking bread over these over these really big conversations, I think that that's really where it comes in, is, is coming from it from a place of love and building up relationships. Angelina, you're amazing. And mm-hmm. I'm going to go circle back to how we started this conversation is that you deserve to be wearing that suit. That's right. You deserve to be wearing that suit every day. Is there a way that people can, for your free lunch Fridays, where are you getting your ingredients from? Is it something that the community, now that they've heard your story and I'm sure are going to want to support you in any way they can, is that something that you take donations in for that? Yes, we do. So, I mean, this last month we had Rise, the Wellbeing Center in downtown. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but they offered to go out scouting and they have they have taken on it to get the ingredients for this month and they have it sitting. I can't say what it is yet because we're not one week away. Um, but yes, we, we will take donations for food. Whomever has, has what next month in November, I'm really, I, I would love to have, you know, a farm that can bring in some organic food or something like that. So that way we can try to make again, it the most authentic, uh, traditional native experience as possible and also educate about food sovereignty and those types of things. We take donations. Again, we were taking it, whatever, <laughs> whatever's available. And then we tell the chef, this is what's it. And then if any, there are, have been financial contributions, which allows us to go out and, you know, get paper products and things like that to serve, you know, costs for overhead staff and that sort of thing. But and to it's do that, great. they go to your website. They have, yeah, they've gone to our website. And usually, when we have the event page up, there is a there is a spot for donations. Um, we will be putting the page up here, hopefully within the next couple of days. We're still scouting for a chef for this month. So, and this month, you're looking for a Native American chef, or is it for November? For November, for okay. October. Okay. okay, yeah. All right. So, Angelina, thank you for coming in today. You are inspiring, empowering. You are pouring out into so many cups and I can't even imagine what your days look like, but let's tell everybody how to find you. So I have link tree that allows for the different ways to get in touch and also get involved with the different projects. Um, I had that written down. Oh, let's, oh, it's right here. So it's link tree, the L I N K T R dot E E forward slash Angelina Marie Hilton. A-N-G-E-L-I-N-A-M-A-R-I-E-H-I-L-T-O-N. And that will link you to everything that you do. Mm -hmm. And probably a good thing to keep note of because I feel like that's just going to continue to grow and grow (laughs) and grow. It's a tree. It's 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 what it does. I love it. It's made Mm -hmm. for people like you that have so much going on and it's one place that you can go and learn about all of it Mm -hmm. and god in grace we Mm -hmm. look forward to it being on the shelves so you'll have to let us know when it's published thank you and official we'll take pictures Mm -hmm. and you'll come back because i feel like this is just the very beginning let's do it let's do it i'd love to thank you very much Thank you, Angelina, for Thank coming you. out with us today and talking. Thank you to Jazzy and Jazzcast Pros. Always. For all the amazing things that you do for us, mm-hmm. like making us sound smooth and not like we have a dog in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Follow <laughs> us. <laughs> Find us. Join us at bossyrock.com backslash join. Follow us on social mm-hmm. at Bossy Rock. That's R-O-C. For those of you that aren't in the Rochester area, everything here ends in R-O-C. If you follow us and go to our website, you can keep track of what we're doing next. We've got a lot of fun things on the horizon. Yeah, we've got our retreat. We'll recap what we've learned and talk to people that have attended. And yeah, and find Angelina at Linktree, L I N K T R dot E E backslash Angelina Marie Hilton. And we'll have that in the show notes. Perfect. Yeah, so you don't have to memorize it right now. Well, I think you almost cried this time. I almost cried twice, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's usually my role. That's like my third time doing these podcasts. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to start having tissues if I'm going to cry too. I think so. There are so many amazing things about Angelina. I love Angelina's passion. And you could tell if you were in the room for this, that everything she said came from her soul. The way she can just follow her faith and where that leads her is incredible and inspiring. And it's gotten them so far. Mm -hmm. Their new space is amazing. The market that she's putting on, I can't wait for. That's fantastic. And I think a lot of these things were inside of her when they were on East Avenue, but there's no way that space could have supported her, her brain and her passion and her heart. I think this is where they needed to be as hard it was as it was to transition to get to where they are now. This is where she needs to be. There's a book that I read on the regular called The Alchemist. Have you ever read mm-hmm. it? Um, and every once in a while when I feel like my life just doesn't make sense and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing, I read The Alchemist and I, I have a running joke with my cousin because we both will tell each other, it sounds like you need to read The Alchemist again, <laughs> that sometimes you just got to scrub toilets for a minute mm-hmm. and then like things are going to work out. And I feel like that's... Like that is not anything like what Angelina said, but that feeling of like, you, sometimes you just need to embrace where you're at yep. and continue moving forward. Mm-hmm. And she just keeps continuing. And then she wrote a book yeah. on the DL. Uh huh. I was like, wow, with everything she's got going on, she managed to write a book. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine. Yeah, she's pretty incredible. And recovery and working with your husband. And and we didn't even businesses. tackle about 10 things that I- I know. I was, my list is still not even crossed off, so. I look forward to having her back in. And quite honestly, we'll get a a completely different interview in six months from now because she will be on to something else that's amazing and fascinating. Well, I can't wait to see what she's up to. Well, tune in next time for Getting Real with Bossy. We are excited to share another story with you and we hope you like it. All right. All right. Be brave. No, we'll try that again. Be brave. (laughs) (sighs) You can leave this in if you want. (laughs) Be brave. Be bold. Be the boss. Be brave. Be bold. Be the boss. See you soon. To my brothers, are you working harder than usual? Do you find yourself stressed? Or you just simply need a rest? Or you can unwind and have an opening discussion of well-being, self-care, or simply just being a man in today's world. And join me on November 12th at the Charleston House, 120 East Avenue, where you can take off that professional hat, have a sip or two, maybe a puff, cigar, of course. I'm your host, Ra, at the Father Torch Podcast, where we advocate for the fathers mentally, physically, emotionally, Being a father is rough and it's hard, but it's even harder when you don't have self-care. So come on down to Charleston House, November 12th, Father Torch, be the dad you wish you had.